Greetings, everyone. Greetings. I am James Piranha Madonna of um, NewsletterCensor.com and Megalife 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Uh, camera person, does everything look okay? Great. All right. I am here at the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey, and it is Saturday, January 15th, 2011. And uh, thank God the temperature came down. Came up. Came up. I'm sorry. The temperature Ooh. came up and to melt this snow that we have now. But I'm here with my um, mentor and co-host, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you, sir, today? Fine, fine, fine. Uh, I can't wait for January to go bye-bye. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I hate January. Yeah, even though it is the, technically the month of the new year. Um, excuse me. And the moving closer to the sun or whatever. Yeah, now we have this situation that uh, I was reading in the NASA, uh, uh, on the NASA website because the American media, the American news media is not telling the people this. But uh, for those of you that do not know, uh, there are, uh, mysteriously are uh, birds and fish dying all over the world and of course the news media is not telling you giving you this information you know the mainstream media so the NASA and the international uh, we uh, news websites uh, publications they're explaining that the I guess the electromagnetic f uh, fields created by the poles have a lot to do with the migration of birds and fish because they do migrate yeah, yeah. and they're mysteriously dying all over the world and uh, supposedly every 500,000 years um, the poles switch and uh, and then I started thinking about 2012 the end of the Mayan calendar the quantum physicists are saying that the planets will align and you know they, they're not sure what effect this will have on the planet when the pole if the poles switch. Maybe they're not telling us everything. This is serious, Reverend Dr. Bill. Well, it's serious. It's happened before, though. You know, and uh, we're still here. But the last time it happened, I believe, we were in an ice age covering North America here. Oh, gee, that's... You know, going right down, going right down right to Texas. Wow. Ice. That will that will uh, that will kill agriculture in America, so we will have to eat like the Inuit tribe and uh, the Native Americans, uh, the Eskimos. We will have to eat the Eskimo diet. However, Atkins would would <laughs> total Atkins. <laughs> it is advised that no one eat more than one fish from any of our waters. American River, you're only allowed to eat one fish per week because of the pollution. But if there's an ice age, I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to have to... We're I, going to freeze to death. We're not going to get much fiber in our diet <laughs> because... And, and But we'll get a lot of ice in our daiquiris. And our daiquiris, yeah. <laughs> uh, what about uh, ice fishing? That's if the fish can... You know, uh, animals are amazing at, at uh, adaptation. You know, the, the fish will probably... They'll, they'll go about their business at a much slower pace. Uh, they'll yeah. lower their metabolic rate. But keep polluting them. That doesn't help. We're all doomed. And why? We are doomed. And why do we have pollution? I'll tell you why. Because of corporate greed. Because corporations do, want, do, do not want to spend the money to properly dispose of their waste. Like General, General Electric being responsible for the PCBs in the Hudson River way back when okay they do not want to spend the money to properly dispose of their waste and they pay off the politicians in the two-party system and they just allow them to do it but anyway well let's 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 just go back to uh, the the uh, tension that has existed always between the uh, employer and the employee now the employer did not give two crops about employees being killed or uh, uh, being shot to death while they were striking for a little 
better wages and stuff. So why would they, why would you expect them to care about pollution? Right. When they don't even care about human beings. Or the corporation getting getting the uh, politicians, the governor or maybe the president at the time, to call out the National Guard against the strikers, like the miners, like the coal miners. Exactly. Many, many years ago. Exactly. In, uh, uh, in Appalachia. And, um, and, you know, if it wasn't for the unions, like, I'm just, it's going to lead up to this because I have a bunch of topics I want to I wanna read. But I want to start off by saying some people, well, not some people, actually, one person, one of those middle class uh, lemmings, you know, the Tea Party protesters, the a corporate ass kissers that vote Republican even though they're not in a high income tax bracket. So uh, they sent me, a, uh, uh, us, a message on YouTube saying that, oh, all we do is complain, we bitch and moan, but we, we, don't, we do not present any solutions. Well, I'm going to present the ultimate solution. The two-party system is obviously corrupt. Republicans, Democrats, it doesn't matter. Politics itself yeah. is pathological, so why would we be seeking solutions within right. that? Politics is pathological, like the, Dr. Bill said. So if you vote for a Republican, you know what they stand for. They stand for the elitist, the rich, big business. Okay. Uh, at least you know, like a, like a prostitute, you know what you're going to get. You know, so God knows why the, the middle class are voting Republican. But anyway, well, I know based on ideology and, and their crazy, deluded, counterfeit Christianity, may, maybe that's it. You know, pro, pro life, Roe versus Wade, you know, pro choice, pro life, uh, uh, gay marriage, prayer in school, all kinds of frivolous things like that forgetting about the job market and the US economy okay which is putting food on the table survival it should be their number one priority now if they vote Democrat the Democrat supposedly feels your pain you get the crocodile tear like Bill Clinton used to do you know I feel your pain I feel your pain all right you get you get you get uh, you know the campaigning about you know I'm for the, we're for the little guy we have compassion for the poor social programs blah 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 okay they get elected and they end up they all the all the compassion and everything goes by the wayside you know or back burner that you know you don't hear about about the uh the, you don't hear the compassionate talk anymore and they vote just like the conservative Republicans do the the Democratic congressmen and senators so in a, in, a, in f the fact is they're in bed with corporate America just like the conservatives are Democrats Republican you know the, the public option saying no to the to the to Obama's health care program with the public option initially when it came out they all said no to the public option the public option equals compassion for the poor uh, a healthcare system like Europe and Canada has is a compassionate, fair healthcare system because everyone in a free democracy has the right to a comfortable, happy retirement and a good, adequate healthcare system. Okay. All right. They say no to, to that. All right. So we know that the two party system is a fake, a phony, a fraud, and they're in bed with the elitists. Okay. So what's left? The big solution is this. Forget about the two-party system. Forget about thinking that only a Democrat or Republican with millions and millions of, of donated campaign funds behind them is the only person qualified to run this country. Forget about that notion. Vote progressive, liberal, independent. Vote for an independent, even though they're not invited to, to the debates anymore you know vote research find out what the independents represent may possible well it'll have to be online do a search online because the media is not inviting the independent candidate to the debates which is very very unfair you have a right to know what your independent candidates stand for so that's the solution vote independent and if enough people vote their conscience and their gut feeling like Jesse Ventura said if enough people are 
get sick and tired and, and uh, are mad as hell and can't take it anymore and, and have realized that the two-party system has lied to them all this time, then enough people will vote independent and you'll kick the bums out. Okay? Hold them accountable. Now, speaking of, ho speaking of that, that's the ultimate solution. Now, our governor here in the Garden State of New Jersey, Chris... Roly poly Christy. Chris Crisco Christy. I named him. I gave him the middle name Crisco. All right. He wants to... Now, you stop me if I'm wrong. Now, I heard... I, you know, a week doesn't go by where this man does not raise my blood pressure sky high. He wants to take the cap off state college tuition. Uh, 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 he wants to allow the state universities to charge what they want to charge. I, I was here overhearing it. He wants to take the cap off of, of state college tuition. Now, isn't that a form of privatization? Exactly. But that's what they seek. The Republicans constantly seek that. They don't like the idea of free education. Really? So, in other words, if people can't afford a private university in New Jersey, they'll turn around and they'll seek out a state university or a community college and a state university, and then they'll realize because of conservative Chris Christie, uh, they now cannot afford to go to a state university because, or community college. <clears throat> because in the end, what these people are seeking is what I put in an article a long time ago. Right. Education throughout history was always for those who had money. The kings, the princes, I was the just barons, gonna say that. etc. And the well-to-do. Well, Thomas Jefferson, of course, when the United States was uh, instituted, he understood right. that education for the masses was necessary for a country to uh, become knowledgeable. Yeah. All right? And being competitive. Be competitive. And competitive and, 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 and etc. But ever since then, after the Republicans became what they are today, yeah. Liars. they have always been against that sort of stuff for the little guy. So now now they're anti-little guy and they want to extinguish... But they pretend that they are for the little guy. But they, they have this fake populism. But but s since the, the conservative way of thinking seems to be uh, uh, eliminating and uh, turning the middle class into a, a uh, an endangered species... Because what they're seeking are workers. Worker bees. Drones. Drones. That's what they're seeking. Cogs of so you don't educate a drone. So they do not want the little guy to have a good exactly. college education, a good exactly. education, and make it affordable for the little guy in America. To them, that that person is riffraff. So they want to eliminate the middle class altogether. So you have only two classes. Right, workers. The rich and the poor, and of course the poor becoming the drones. Of society, the so suckers. You see it, you know, in like uh, third world nations or yeah. something. You'll see the big boys, and then you'll see the little servants that uh, the little peasant servants that serve them. Like a feudalistic society. So that's what they seek. That's what they. That's seek. That's what they want. They want. They want little the little people to work for maybe minimum wage or less than minimum well, they wage. They prefer slavery, but with no benefits. But of course, they prefer slavery. In a heartbeat, they would they would take it back. Exactly. So that's that's that about the wonderful privatization of Chris Christie and all conservatives, Republicans. Now, now the government, the government, we're speaking of Washington now. They have this new thing with school lunch reform. They say if the taxpayers are paying for kids, are contributing for children, America's uh, 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 students to have a, a school lunch and it's coming out of taxpayers' uh, dollars. They want to be able to decide what the children will eat. Now, they're talking about, they're, they're making it sound like they have good intentions. You know, they want healthy meals to be offered kids since the taxpayers are paying for it. Well, I saw on the news 
what their idea of a healthy meal is and it more equates to a cheapo low budget meal not necessarily a healthy meal I hate this fucking thing next to me but it, it's our source of heat anyway the healthy meal I, I saw white bread this is the government's plan white bread I saw iceberg lettuce which has hardly any nutritional value I didn't see dark leafy greens I did not see romaine lettuce or any of the dark lettuces I saw a lot of crap so it kind of reminded me when uh, the government sent food to the the Native Americans in southern Arizona after they cut their their water supply for their farming and they sent them crap high sugar chemicals preservatives uh, 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 low nutritional value shit and the Indians later it became suffered, very sick. Suffered because of it. Very sick. They became diabetes. diabetes. People had their legs amputated. Alcoholism. Alcoholism and all this stuff. Now, this is the government's answer. Okay, we're going to reform school lunches because the taxpayers have to pay for it. Yeah, they're, well, I know what they're talking about. They want to lower, they want a low cost, low budget school lunch so the rich will end up paying less taxes. Of course. And remember, back in Reagan's day, they tried to they tried to uh, to make ketchup a vegetable as part of the school lunch program. Ketchup is a vegetable, ketchup. wow. Yes. It's loaded with corn syrup. There you go. Listen, when it comes to the, the little guy, conservatives make a big stink out of anything the government government provides for them. It's like a big deal. Just like the stupid soup kitchen Thanksgiving dinners with the little Swanson, it looks like a Swanson hungry man dinner with this cheap ass fucking food that they make it sound like they're giving they're doing the homeless a big favor. It's shit. Okay. Chris Christie wants to remove tenure from teachers, from established teachers. And of course he's conservative, he's Republican, he's anti-union, of course. And uh, I just want to start out by saying, Mr. Christie, first I want to say, there are jobs and there are careers. There's a, there's a big difference. I mean, a job is you know just to get by, make ends meet, money in your pocket. A career involves going to school, getting trained, being a lot, being ripped off by the American uh, acad academia, paying a astronomical highway robbery tuition, and okay, now you owe your heart, lungs, and liver to pay back the student loan. Okay, you graduate. Let's say you graduate with high grades. You make the dean's honors list. Now you're ready to start a career. You can't find a job because the jobs are outsourced. Republicans say there's plenty of jobs. No. Nah. You're lucky if you find retail or fast food. Now, the career. A teacher is a career. Just like a, a IT professional, computer programming, whatever. Even a, a person who was a police officer who has to put their life and safety on the line and, and work lousy shifts to uh, uh, like New York City cops, get a, what do they get, a lousy $25,000 a year to start? Yeah. To put their life on the line, similar to a military personnel in the United States military. Put their lives on the line for a lousy pay. Interesting. Anyway, teachers, you have to have an incentive to, to be in a career in order to want to be, get involved in that career and, and make a lifetime commitment to that career. You need an incentive. Without the incentive of moolah, why would anybody want to dedicate themselves to be the best teacher they can possibly be and spend the rest of their life being a teacher, teaching a bunch of uh, 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 de uh, delinquent monsters that you have nowadays and put up with that crap. You know, I mean, he wants to take away tenure. He, he wants to get rid of the unions, which will make us short of slavery, all of us. Now, then why, Chris Christie, would anybody want to be a teacher? Well, I got a better question. But he doesn't want people to be teachers. Who does he want to teach? Nobody. Because okay. the more you teach a person, the more educable they can, the more 
the more knowledge they gain, and therefore they're not going to be the worker bee. The worker bee. The Republicans bee. are against free education. Okay. For the poor and for the middle. So they want private schools where the elitists... For their people, for, yes. So their people, the elitists, can pay for their children's grammar school, high school, and college education. It's all to keep the money and the knowledge and everything else on the top. The top. Nothing to trickle down. The cream always rises to the top and nothing trickles down to the little guy. So in actuality, so at these town hall meetings, Chris Christie doesn't want to tell people the real hard-hitting truth. Exactly. Now recently, Chris Christie was did one of his town hall meetings over here at the uh, Elks Lodge on Route 17 North in Paramus, New Jersey, near, not too far from us, where uh, East Coast Professional Wrestling does their, uh, their monthly TV taping. What a small world. Anyway, I think all these town meetings, even though Chris Christie wants to make it sound like he wants to get close to the people and hear what the people think and hear how they feel, I think he's just campaigning and, and picking brains to see where he stands with the voter so he can get reelected and possibly set himself up for a future presidential campaign or, you know, something big. So there's something in it for Chris Christie. It's not that he cares so much about the little people in the state and he wants to find out what they think. We know, we know that he doesn't care about the people in the state because he's, he's laid off so many people. He's lost, uh, all these jobs are gone. He's yeah, he's supposed to be. Doing a Paul Bunyan and a and shopping. And yet he'll go around and tell everybody that he's trying to provide jobs. Well, how do you do that? By by uh, giving tax breaks to the rich? Yeah, he wants, you know, I mean... That's what he did. He cuts taxes. The he only cut, thing he... Women's health issues he cut. He cut all these things. He cut the teachers. He did. And he gives a tax break to the rich. Planned Parenthood, everything. He wants to cut every social program that helps the poor and the needy. the homestead rebates. Homestead rebates. But, yeah, but I so heard... Property taxes are going to go up. I heard year. that property taxes last year didn't go up in New Jersey. Yes, and they're going to go up this year again. So, And at least, if we had the homestead rebates, we would have got that back. But isn't Chris Christie breaking a campaign promise by allowing property taxes to go up? Isn't he breaking yes, a, prom he is. a promise to the middle class? But who cares, right? <laughs> From well, their point of view. He's a politician, right? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, He's who, trying to save New Jersey. Actually, somebody should save New Jersey from Chris Christie. Yeah, well, a politician is a prostitute with a suit and tie, but the only thing is you know exactly what you get from a prostitute. Prostitute. Which, uh, by the way, uh, uh, prostitution uh, just uh, is a victimless crime, and like uh, just like the frivolous crime of marijuana. I heard Amsterdam is cracking down on the prostitutes that... Uh, sit in the window. I, I, I think the storefront? Going, yeah, the storefront. I think they're going to tax them. I think that's what it's all about. Maybe that's why the the right wing uh, religious nuts in, in politics don't like prostitution because they can't they can't tax them, you know, and, uh, and no, no, like, no, 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 that, 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 that's that not thing, it. No, that's it's total ideology. it's total ideology. That's the ideology religious crap stuff, oh, okay. where they come from on that. Yeah, like telling, you know... Prostitution should be like any other business. If a woman wants to do that, let her do it. It's her body. It's her body. What are we going to go around with, the, like, uh, like uh, the, the, the Muslims with burqas and, 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 and uh, haters and cover our yeah, or the Amish women? And, uh, covering, I mean, this is ridiculous Making sure stuff. the women are covered up right under the chin? Yeah. Like they did in, in the 1800s? Where, where's that freedom? Remember something, though, about America and uh, Antonin Scalia and your conservative guys on the Supreme Court and otherwise. The fact of the matter is, when they speak about the Constitution, they're speaking about a Constitution that existed way back when. The original. They don't want to. They don't want to uh, go along with the Fourteenth Amendment. They don't want to go along with an amendment. 
that gave women the vote. They don't want to go, I think it was in 1970-something, uh, uh, women uh, were... They called suffrage? That was 19 Women's right to vote? Yeah. But it was in a, a, the early 70s where women, because when, when the original founding fathers said uh, uh, all men are created equal, they did not mean women. And they, they did not include uh, African Americans, black, blacks, black people. That's great, but the 14th Amendment included blacks. But people like Antonin Scalia and everybody else, the 14th Amendment gives the right of personhood to, co to uh, corporations, but not women. Women are not mentioned in the Constitution until the 1970s. Okay, now what wasn't... This is an enlightened country! Uh, yeah, right. My ass. Wasn't uh, prohibition a right-wing fundamentalist bunch oh, of crap? They, they tried to blame it on 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 on, on liberals. What? Pro yes. Alcohol consumption. Yes. It was a Republican. And, and they did more. Th they did more damage with prohibition because the underground, the booze that they were, the hooch that That's they were selling, spawned, uh, had formaldehyde. Alcohol. And yeah, organized crime. Yeah, but they were watering down the the white lightning with like. Chemicals, right? The, the, the formaldehyde was in. But it spawned organized crime. People were dying from this crap. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like, listen. Uh, 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 <laughs> That's what happened. You can't legislate morality. No. You know, you can, you can, you can, like, like the Muslims do. They put it under, they put it underground. But what would happen one day if the women just said, no? We want our freedom. And they should have their freedom. What would happen then? Right. It's like with abortion. But somehow they keep the women tamped down. Uh, 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 an, an embryo, a fertilized egg or an embryo that breeds like a fish is not a person. The Bible does not mention th uh, that. Uh, the Bible doesn't and mention doesn't anything, anything about, about being abortion. About abortion. Any way, shape, or form. Now... Uh, I just want to, uh, uh, Chris Christie, just, um, you know, why doesn't he tells everybody in New Jersey that's not an elitist, that's not an elitist, and the country for that matter, because he sticks his Pinocchio nose into every uh, right-wing movement throughout the country. He's on and off the plane all the time. You know, he wants the little guy to make sacrifices and cut back. But when is Chris Christie and the congressmen and senators in Washington, when are they, the, the conservatives, when are they going to make sacrifices and cut back and take a pay cut instead of making $175,000 a year with free health care and free uh, retirement Pens pensions? Okay, Chris Christie, why don't you make a cutback? Pensions that are guaranteed, by the way, because the pensions in New Jersey... Uh, Christie has not paid the New Jersey share into the pension funds in this state. Yeah. So he's not making he's not I making no call those things guaranteed, would you? No, he's not making any sacrifices. One hundred seventy-five grand. I mean, granted, even and a, and a food budget. Oh yeah, and and <laughs> sacrifice some of your grocery bill, and and the soup kitchens will be buffets. <laughs> Now and like the woman, well, I look the the teacher making eighty five thousand a year. She could pay for her own health insurance. It costs about seven hundred, eight hundred dollars a month for a, a, a decent health plan, and she could pay for her own IRA, individual retirement account, for eighty five thousand a year. I think she can afford it, plus her own mortgage or whatever. But. Chris Christie is making the same as they they make in Washington, right? About one hundred seventy-five grand. He's making one hundred seventy-five. Yeah. He's not making sacrifices. No. But the little guy has to make sacrifices. Now we were talking before about the power of the boycott. If only Americans, like Gary Noll, mentioned boycotting something. What was it? Well, no, you don't shop in all the all the stores. Walmart, like Walmart, Whole Foods, Sam's Club, BJ's. Just stop shopping. Well, you know, what, what Gary is, it, it's local, local, local. That's where we ought to go. We have to go local. Right, locals. Why like would we... Organic right now, farming, local. Right now, if you right. want a tomato, right. if you go to one of the uh, grocery stores or supermarkets and you want a tomato, that tomato ain't coming from here.
from this country. It's coming from somewhere else, maybe right. Mexico or whatever. Right. What the hell do we need to import the tomatoes for? That's true. America always relied on local small businesses and farming and mom and Walmart pop stores. Walmart right now is, wants to put a, a store in New York. And they're advertising up a storm. But how many jobs they're going to create? Oh, sure. And that the, Low the, people, the people who are against them are just some political uh, 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 reason is behind it. Yeah. No. What's behind it is when Walmart comes in, there goes all the mom and pops, all the small businesses, etc. That's right. That's what Walmart does across like, this nation. Like an, ami an amoeba just taking over. Now, but the thing is, if only Americans knew how powerful the boycott is, whether it be overpriced SUVs, it doesn't matter. Whether it be rip-off plane fares, like, uh, what's the infamous, what was it, the, the airlines that wants to charge you everything in, uh, well, for the carry-on. Yeah, they want to charge you Was it everything. Spirit Airlines or Delta? Uh, all of them. They're all got these things. Boycott. If, you, if, ever, if people boycotted and... The, comp the, co the greedy corporations can't make their profit. Hey, you got the power over them. Boycott politicians. Vote them out of office. Vote for the independent. Now, on to the next subject. The Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, who is our mentor, of course, and the founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, and my co-host. Uh, and we're, we are here coming to you live from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. He told me about one of my favorite people right now, currently, is uh, <laughs> the weeper of the house, the, the bartender himself, uh, 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 Congressman John Bonehead Boner B Boehner. Now, he, w he didn't show up uh, for the memorial in, uh, in Tucson, Arizona with uh, uh, President Barack Obama to say, give a eulogy or something or his condolences and he's the weeper of the house where he, he hasn't been weeping for this tragedy that took place in uh, Tucson no it was more important to go to a cocktail party a Republican cocktail party to raise money for Republicans that was more important for mr. bonehead Boehner John Boehner cannot go to Tucson Arizona with everyone else and give his condolences and and shed some tears since he's such an expert on command at shedding tears yeah, he, he couldn't do the Stan Laurel you know <laughs> you know uh, you know he does it like a little like a little baby you know when a baby before they cry they're they're they, uh, 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 they lead they lead up to the crying <laughs> John John Boehner. You know, a crocodile tear. Perhaps he cried over his cocktail. It's not Crocodile Rock. Huh? Perhaps he cried over his cocktail. Maybe he didn't have an olive. You have an olive in a cocktail? A cocktail? I don't know. Well, a martini. Manhattan martini. I think a dry mar a, a martini, uh, let's take a, a traditional martini, would be uh, dry vermouth, uh, uh, gin, and, and an olive. Uh, I think a vodka martini, you would substitute the gin with vodka. Well, maybe someone put a cherry. Hopefully good vodka. Maybe somebody put a cherry in his martini and he had to cry. A maraschino cherry? Yeah. Those artificially colored... Oh, I can't stand them. <laughs> Martinis are quite potent. But uh, shake your nuts, third. Well, that's me. I don't know. <laughs> But, uh, you know, uh, but anyway, John Boehner was probably crying. Uh, if he cried over his martinis, probably crying because all, this, all the, the students in law school uh, won't be able to, to uh, 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 experience the... Wait, wait, hold on. Uh, 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 experience the uh, American j j j j j j dream and rip and screw their way to, to the top. And make a f f f f f fortune. <laughs> yeah, he cries about that. He cries about. Well, the American dream is only for the rich, anyway. Well, yeah, they made it that way. I mean, you know, the laws are all made. You know, they're not made for the little guy. The backbone, traditionally, the backbone of America and the backbone of the American economy, 
has always been small businesses, local businesses, local farms, entrepreneurs, mom and pop stores, and supplying the jobs and goods for America locally. There is one, now stop me if I'm wrong, and um, um, maybe if a Senator uh, Robert Menendez hears this, you can drop me a line and tell me if I'm wrong or not, because he, he's a Democrat uh, a senator from, I believe, Union City, New Jersey, Bob Menendez. Seems like a very nice man. Frank Lautenberg is from New Jersey also, Senator Frank Lautenberg. Now, there is an area in northeastern New Jersey that reminds me of uh, old America of the past where people depend on local businesses and that area is Bergen Line Avenue in Union City New Jersey the whole it's a very long street loaded with all sorts of local businesses whether it be retail stores butchers bakers uh, fishmongers restaurants doctors lawyer office you name it it's just chock full, one after the other, of established local businesses that have been there for many years. Possibly family owned businesses that were passed on generation after generation. And the people that live in the area do not have to worry about t driving a car or taking, not even taking public transportation. They just leave their house. You know their their residence which is on a side street I mean it's not the best neighborhood in the world it's not highfalutin but you know it can be you know uh, uh, and they just simply walk to get whatever they want their shopping is done on foot maybe they have to take maybe one New Jersey transit bus but remember that community is Spanish it's Hispanic predominantly but isn't that maybe in Latin America that's how things are? Everything's local? Well, in a lot of other countries that's how things are. Everybody, Europe? Everybody gets up in the morning, goes to the local market to get their food for today. All fresh. We don't have anything like that here. Fresh? Actually, when uh, Anthony Bourdain uh, uh, of the Travel Channel, uh, Man vs. Food, he, he was in an area in, in, I think, Brazil where everything is purchased fresh. No, it was Argentina. Everything was purchased fresh because the people were poor. They didn't have refrigeration, but the fresh food was very cheap, affordable, and close by. You could walk there. You could walk there. But anyway, we're going to take, we're going to take a break because I want to come back for a little bit with a very important topic, but this pretty much is it. We'll see you next time from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. Say goodbye. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I get so wound up with Chris Christie and the, and the conservatives that I forget the most important thing. Be well, this is the foundation of our organization, Newsletter Censored, founded in 1977 by the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, it contains the five taboos of American life, which is politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. And uh, this is the new issue titled The Hidden Enemy. And inside you have the political analysis by the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. And then, uh, uh, well, in this case, you have Health Talk by James. Well, it's supposed to be James P. Madonna, but it, here it says James Madonna. But you know it's me anyway. Anyway, followed by sometimes tidbits, uh, current news topics. But in this case, The God Project by William J. Eisenman, Doctor of Divinity. Get your annual subscription now with your gift to support this work by going to our homepage, because I hear MySpace is in serious financial trouble. They might go belly up, I don't know. So our homepage from now on is www.newslettercensored.com. Go there, click on the printable order form, and with your gift to support this work, get the newsletter. Also, 
The Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman self-portrait is right here. He is a fine, well-established watercolor artist. This is his one of his most popular paintings because it is a self-portrait of himself. Fine watercolor painting. They they start at uh, uh, $500. The bidding starts at $500 each. Go to newslettercensor.com or go to William J. Eisenman's Facebook uh, 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 page. His paintings are there. And they're also at www.myspace.com forward slash megalife21. Check out the William J. Eisenman collection. And based on availability, drop him a line, ask him if it's available, and they are available for purchase. This, of course, we kind of we kind of need this one, so you're going to have to bid really high to take this because we and need nobody, it. Nobody's going to bid on bid on somebody else's portrait. Anyway. No, yeah, we actually need this because this is for the you know, museum. yeah, for the museum. Plus, it's for the shows because it's right next to me. I don't have to hold it. Anyway, say so long. So long. Yeah.